Okay, welcome everyone. My name is Alejandra Guayas. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I am one of the program coordinators at the Idea Center. Welcome to today's WISE session. Uh, today we have the Undergraduate Research Hub uh, presenting on STEM summer research opportunities. So I will go ahead and pass it on over to her. Hi, thank you so much and thank you for inviting me. Uh, my name is Dr. Kirsten Kang. I work at the Undergraduate Research Hub. Our office used to be known as the um, Academic Enrichment Programs Office, or AEP. So if you hear people making reference to AEP, that's the same as our office. We now are, are called the Undergraduate Research Hub, which I think captures a little bit better what it is that we do. Um, and really our office is designed to give students an opportunity to find out about research and to help facilitate and make that happen. So my understanding is that there's probably students here from a, a range of class levels, and there may be some of you who have already done research, and there may be others who are just starting to think about it. So I'm going to talk a little bit about research and why you might want to get involved, and then I'll talk more specifically about some summer research programs that we have that might be of interest to you. So if I can let me share my screen. And there should be um, time at the end for questions. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so are you seeing the, um, the slides? Yes. Okay, great. Yeah. So there should be time at the end for questions. Um, because of being in presentation mode, it may be a little difficult to, uh, for me to keep up with the chat, but you can also enter questions there as well. So what is research? Basically research is the study of um, a specific problem or question or topic, and it's discovering new ideas or information. It's building upon existing ideas. Uh, and it's one of the most exciting things that I think you can do. And one of the things that's great about being at UC San Diego is that you have the opportunity to take part in research as an undergraduate. So while you're here, I really strongly recommend that you look into it and get involved in doing some research yourself. Why might you want to do research? Well, as I mentioned, you get to create and share knowledge. Uh, one of the highlights of it is that you build relationships with mentors and the mentors will be faculty members. They will also be postdoctoral scholars, graduate students. There are a number of different people who are typically involved in research and you will get to work with different people and get to know them. And these people can give you guidance in terms of future career goals and what steps you might want to take next. And it's just exciting to, to be in touch with people. I know sometimes with undergraduate courses, it can be hard to get to know a faculty member very well, but doing research gives you an opportunity to have some more interpersonal connection. You can often get paid or receive academic credit for doing research. It prepares you if you think that you might want to go to graduate school. Uh, it's also something where even if you don't think you want to go to graduate school, the skills that you learn doing research are very transferable and are the type of thing that is really valued by um, people in all sorts of different fields and career options. So uh, even if you're planning to go directly into industry, we have spoken with a lot of people who hire undergraduates and say that they really value when an undergraduate has had research experience. It's not just for students who are interested in going to graduate school. You also develop critical thinking skills. Uh, one of the best things about it, I think, is developing a sense of community with your peers, getting to know other students who are also doing research. You can travel to various conferences. You can practice your public speaking. You develop a broad professional network. So not just the mentors here at UC San Diego, but uh, throughout the country and even internationally. So how might you go about picking a topic? You can think about things like what excites you? What invokes a sense of curiosity for you? Are there things that you've always kind of wondered about? Are there things that you would like to create or problems that you feel need to be solved? Uh, what do you like to spend your time doing? A lot of times students uh, embark on research because they are studying something in their classes and it just kind of sparks their curiosity and they want to find out more about that. So that's a wonderful source of uh, potential topics to study. 
how do you find a mentor? So as I mentioned, when you're doing research, you'll be working with a mentor and it can be a little bit difficult sometimes to know how to find a mentor. One of the best steps is to reach out to faculty members with whom you've taken classes or with whom you're, you're going to be taking courses uh, and just say, oh, I, I was in your course last quarter and I really enjoyed it. And I found this particular topic particularly interesting. Um, I was wondering if you do research and if you ever take undergraduates on. You can also look through the departmental web websites. That's a great resource to find out more about faculty members who might be doing research that's of interest to you. There are a couple of different online opportunities as well. So if you go to the real portal or Handshake, faculty members often post opportunities there. Um, just be aware that just because somebody has not posted there doesn't mean that they aren't doing research or would not be involved, interested in having undergraduates involved. Once you have identified a possible mentor, reach out via email to formally introduce yourself. Um, basically, you want to give a brief introduction of who you are, explain why you're reaching out to that person in particular. Don't just kind of make it seem like I'm emailing every single faculty member in engineering and hoping that somebody will respond to my email. Talk about why that particular person's research is interesting to you. Uh, you want this email to be professionally worded, so don't use emoticons or um, texting language. Just you know, put your best foot forward. It doesn't need to be a long email, just enough to introduce yourself and express why you're interested and kind of what you hope the next steps might be. So perhaps suggesting a meeting. Uh, and faculty members are definitely busy. They may, it may feel intimidating to approach them, but they love what they do and they love talking with people about what they do. And so if you express an interest, um, somebody will write you back and say, yeah, sure, I'd love to talk with you. So I wanna transition a little bit more into specific research opportunities. And I know one of the questions that we get quite a bit are, are there research opportunities that would be a good fit for me? And regardless of who you are, the answer is yes. Some students say, well, I'm, I'm just a first year or, oh, I'm a senior, is it too late? Um, or, oh, I'm not in a field that typically does research. Um, all of those things, it's, it's fine. There are research opportunities that would be relevant for you. So there's opportunities for all different fields of research. I know you're all in engineering, but if there's any of you who are double majoring and are wondering about doing uh, research in another field, there's research in other fields, certainly engineering, there's tons of research opportunities, uh, all levels of previous research experience. So whether you've never done research before or have done quite a bit of research, there's opportunities for you. Um, we have some programs really that are kind of designed for students who have done a lot of research and we have others that are designed for students who've never done research and some that kind of take everyone. Um, we have research opportunities for students in all different class standings, first years through seniors, all citizenship statuses. Some programs might be limited due to their funding source. So there may be some programs that are only open to US citizens or permanent residents, but there are other programs that are open to everyone regardless of your citizenship status. So don't let that be something that causes you to feel like, oh, I can't do it. And also all future education and career goals. As I mentioned, certainly if you want to go to graduate school, doing research is a really, really important first step. But if you're not planning to go to graduate school, it's still a really important step to helping you meet your goals. Uh, and sometimes students do research, they think that they want to do research and go on into graduate school and they do research and decide, oh, maybe not graduate school, but maybe I'd like to do something else. So that's part of the, the point of being an undergraduate is exploring these different things and getting an opportunity to try different things and see what is of interest to you. You might decide I love research, but this topic that I thought I really wanted to devote my life to isn't a good fit for me. I, I really, now that I've done a little bit of research in that area, I think I want to veer off and do a little bit more in this other area. And that works out well too. Uh, so just be aware, whoever you are, whatever your standing is at UC San Diego, there are definitely research opportunities that are available for you. I'm going to talk about research opportunities available specifically through our office, through the Undergraduate Research Hub or URH, 
but there are also other ways to do research. So you don't have to be part of a formal program. Uh, you don't have to be part of a formal program through our office. I know, for example, that um, the engineering department itself has a number of great programs available. So there's lots of different ways to get involved. I do encourage you to think about being in a formal program rather than just doing it on your own because there's other benefits. It uh, helps you get this sense of community and helps you interact with other students. There are program coordinators who can help provide you with some guidance. There's often other opportunities like professional development activities. So I encourage that you uh, think about doing a formal program, but you don't have to. It's, it's fine to do research on your own. Okay, so the bulk of this presentation is going to focus on a summer research program. Uh, we do have academic year programs, so just be aware of that. And if you feel like you want to get started on research now, um, please visit our website or make a, an appointment with one of us and we can talk to you more about our academic year programs. But for now, I'm going to talk primarily about summer research programs. So these research programs include faculty mentored research. The goal really is for you to spend a lot of time doing research and getting guidance from a mentor. So in each of our programs, there'll be a faculty member who serves as your mentor. Often some of your day-to-day -day training will um, be given by a postdoctoral candidate or um, a graduate student or somebody else. So although you will be overseen by a faculty member, you may also um, get quite a bit of mentorship from somebody else. We also have a number of different professional development activities. So we have seminars and workshops and things like ethics, research communication, career paths. Some of the programs offer a GRE preparation course. The GRE is kind of like the SAT or ACT for graduate school. It's a standardized test that you take and uh, the scores are one of the factors that many programs, many graduate programs evaluate in terms of um, offering positions in the graduate program to students. The GRE scores also often play a role in terms of scholarships and fellowships. So uh, you definitely want to do well on the GRE because it can have a big impact. And our programs, many of our programs offer a GRE prep course. So this is a really valuable course that helps you get ready to take the GRE. It also helps you just in general with standardized tests. A lot of it uh, covers just strategy and the type of ways that you might approach questions on a standardized test to maximize your score. We also offer library training. Certainly a lot of you are probably already familiar with the libraries at UC San Diego and everything that they have to offer. Um, but we've had students who have said, oh, I've done research for several years and I went to the library training and discovered some new resources or some new approaches and ways to uh, gather information from the library resources. We also have a number of networking opportunities. To give you a general sense of our summer research program, we typically have a couple of hundred students in it, and those students are in different sub programs within the, the overall program. Uh, and so students get to meet one another. We have smaller cohort groups, but then you get to meet students in a larger group. So it gives you a lot of opportunities to talk to other students. We also try to emphasize giving you the opportunity to interact with faculty members and graduate students. Um, and postdocs so that you can have lots of people out there to go to if you have questions or who can serve as a resource for you. We have a number of social events and community building activities. And then the culmination of the summer research program is the summer research conference. This is a conference where the students in our summer research program present their work, uh, it's oral presentations. We also have students who are not in our program, but who are doing research through other programs at UC San Diego and other programs in San Diego, and in fact, other programs throughout the country. Um, so the Summer Research Conference typically has over 400 students presenting their work, which is really exciting. It's a great way to see the work that other students are doing. Uh, it's a wonderful opportunity for you to share what you have done with your summer. Um, so it's it's one of the highlights of the summer. So in general, there are a number of benefits of a summer research program. You get to delve into a specific topic in depth. 
during the academic year, it can be really difficult to focus on just um, doing research. You're trying to juggle so many other things. And although you may have time to do research during the academic year, it's different when you have the opportunity to just really focus on your research project. Uh, you don't have to be focusing on classes or anything like that. In fact, for our research programs, you're not allowed to take outside classes and you're not allowed to work during the course of the summer research program. We do that because we really want students to be able to um, engage in depth in the research experience. We do understand that for many students, it's not practical to just not earn money over the summer. And so the summer research programs offer a stipend. That is you get paid to, do, to participate in the program. So we really want to set it up so that um, there's not a financial disadvantage. And in fact, there is often a, a strong financial advantage to doing the summer research program. Many of the programs offer housing support. So typically the way it works is the programs all offer roughly the same amount of compensation. And for some programs, that's all in the form of a stipend. And then other programs have a somewhat lower stipend, but they offer um, on-campus housing if you'd like to stay on campus, or they offer a housing allocation. So if you already have housing arranged and don't want to be on campus, you would, instead of getting the on-campus housing, get a housing allocation. And so the housing support and the stipend combined add up to be about the same as the stipend support for the programs that don't offer housing support. Some of the programs also offer course credit. This is in the form of 199 credit in um, the department of your mentor. Um, so there's a number of different advantages. This uh, chart is perhaps a little bit overwhelming. I'm not gonna go through it in great detail, but I just wanted to show it to you so that you have a general sense of what's out there. And this is available on our website. You can see that there are a number of different programs through our uh, office, and they vary in terms of which fields or majors they're relevant to. The length is generally either eight or 10 weeks. As I mentioned, there's some programs that are um, only available to students who are US citizens or permanent residents. Others are open to students of any citizenship status. The minimum GPA varies as well. Some of them are limited to students who have junior or senior standing. Some are for students of all class levels. And when it says junior or senior standing, that refers to the number of units you have. So you could come in as a first year student and have taken so many AP credits or other things that you would have junior standing before the program begins. Uh, so again, on our website, there's more details in terms of the eligibility requirements. So let me give you an idea of some of our specific proper, uh, programs. As I've been talking about, we have what's called the Summer Research Program or SRP, and that's kind of an umbrella program that encompasses a number of different programs all underneath that one program. So some of the programs under that SRP umbrella include the CAMP program, which is the California Lewis Stokes Alliance for Minority Participation. Uh, we have the UC Scholars and Genentech Scholars Program, and I'll talk about some of these in greater detail in just a moment the Triton Research and Experiential Learning Scholars Program, um, the Undergraduate Research Scholarships, and Colors of the Brain. We do also have another summer program called the McNair Scholars Program. That's a program that takes place during winter and spring and summer. So the application for that has already closed. Typically the application is available um, in early winter quarter. So for those of you who was who will still be around next year, I encourage you to look at that because it's a, it's a great program. It gives you the opportunity to participate in research during the academic year and then also during the summer. So moving on and talking about specific programs, uh, one set of kind of sister programs that we have are the UC Scholars and Genentech Scholars Program. These are two separate programs, but they run in conjunction with one another. So we do a lot of the activities together. Um, I'm the coordinator for the UC Scholars Program and my colleague, uh, Dr. Sophia Tsai is the coordinator for the Genentech Scholars Program. 
These programs have one shared application. So you basically apply to the, you complete the application and it will ask whether you want to apply to, or have your application considered for UC scholars or for Genentech scholars or for both. These applications are due February 7th. So that's coming up. There's not a ton of time, uh, but it would still be possible for you to apply to them. Uh, it includes a stipend. The stipend is $3,000 for the UC Scholars Program or $3,500 for the Genentech Scholars Program. The difference is that the UC Scholars Program is eight weeks, whereas Genentech is 10 weeks. Uh, this is one of the programs that offers either on-campus housing or a housing allowance if you'd like to live off campus. It includes the GRE prep course. Um, as is the case with all of our programs, you build a relationship with your mentor. You gain experience presenting research in your field of interest. There is a minimum 2.8 GPA requirement. If you are really close to that, but a little bit underneath, um, I'd encourage you to still apply. You can reach out to me and ask and tell me more about your specific situation. Um, for some of the programs, when there's a minimum GPA, it's a, it's a hard cutoff, and that often is due to the funding source. For this one, there's a little bit of flexibility. Now, um, we, we do want to make sure that if a student is struggling with their GPA, that they focus on their classes and don't spend so much time focusing on, say, putting together the application for this, that their coursework suffers. Um, so, so it's a possibility, um, but just reach out and, and talk to me. The programs also do require a letter of recommendation for the application. This letter of recommendation does not have to be from somebody at UC San Diego, and it does not need to be from somebody that you will be working with as a mentor. So for example, we have a lot of um, transfer students who just started in the fall, and by the time the application period rolls around in early, winter quarter, they may not know a UC San Diego faculty member well enough to, um, to have that person write a letter of recommendation for them. That's fine. It's fine to have a letter of recommendation from somebody at a community college, for example, who knows you well. We often get questions from students about whether who might be a good person to write a letter of recommendation, not just for this program, but in general. So First of all, you want to pay attention to the specific program. Again, for this program, the letter does not need to come from the person that you'll be working with in the program. For some of the other programs, it does. So keep that in mind. Um, but in general, you want to have somebody who knows you well and who will be able to write a strong letter that addresses the reasons why you would be a good fit for a research program. So a strong letter is one that's not only positive, but also has some detail to it. So having a faculty member, for example, write and say, oh, you know, John was in my class and he did really well. He, you know, sat in the front of the class and asked questions and he got an A in the class. That's all positive. That's all great. But it doesn't really give us a lot of information, um, doesn't give us many details. So we'd love to hear from somebody who can really talk more about um, why how they know you, why they know that you would be a good fit for this. Uh, having said that, you also want somebody who has some experience in terms of academic fields and research and that type of thing. So for example, having say um, a sports coach who knows you well, but doesn't really have a sense of your academic abilities, that might not be a good person to have as a letter writer because the letter would essentially be kind of a character reference, which again is important and, and good, but it wouldn't provide much information in terms of your capabilities in an academic type of setting. So think about those factors as you're looking for people to write letters of recommendation for you. On our website, we do have um, a number of resources related to asking for letters of recommendation. So I encourage you to look there we have a podcast that we did where we talked about letters of recommendation and we have um, some written documents that kind of go over letter of recommendation recommendations. <laughs> so uh, please look into that. For UC scholars and Genentech scholars, you do need to have 90 units by the end of spring quarter. So uh, basically junior standing by the time that you're finished with this year, so before the program starts. It's 
open to students of all citizenship statuses and all levels of research experience. One of the things that's really great about this program is that we try to have a wide range of students in it. So we have students from a number of different fields. Uh, we have students who are kind of very, very early on in their academic career and research experience and students who've been doing research for several years. So it makes it a little hard when students say, well, what makes for a strong application? It's not necessarily what you might traditionally think of as a strong application. Often for things like this, the more experience you have, the better, and that really strengthens your application. Certainly if you have experience, that's great. But if you don't have experience, that's absolutely fine too. And there are times where we'll accept a student who doesn't have necessarily um, a lot of experience, but who really has a lot of potential and who looks like they're going to get a lot out of participating in the program. So when students ask what makes for a strong application, I think one of the, the best things is just enthusiasm and passion. We want to hear about why you want to be in this program and why you feel that it would be beneficial to you, how you feel that it would have an impact on you, why you're interested in research. So if you're already doing research, certainly talk about what it is that really excites you about the research that you're doing. If you're doing research, but you want to change and, and maybe gear towards a different topic, that's fine. Talk about why you want to explore this new topic. If you've never done research before, that's also fine. Just talk about why you think you'd like to try research out. So um, as you're applying to any of these programs, just make sure that you kind of express why it is that you think this would be a good fit for you, why it is you're interested in research. Make sure that you do your research about each of the specific programs. So for example, the UC Scholars and Genentech Scholars Program does have a strong element of um, of professional development activities and things along those lines. It's not just the research component. So we certainly would want students in it who see the value in that, who see the value in taking the GRE class, who see the value in going to these workshops and seminars and things like that. Um, so you can mention that in your application as well. Um, again, UC Scholars is open to all majors. Genentech Scholars is for students in life science and biotechnology fields. Um, another set of research opportunities that we have is the Undergraduate Research Scholarships, or URS. This is essentially a family of different scholarships. So there's a whole number of different scholarships that are all under this URS family. They include a $5,000 stipend. Um, you include, you um, build a relationship with a mentor. Um, similar to all of our programs, you gain experience presenting your research and working in your field. For this application, um, a little bit more is involved, and this application, these applications are due on February 15th, although I believe for some of the opportunities under URS, they may have later deadlines. Um, so the, it's, it's a family of opportunities, but they each have some differences amongst them. So for the URS opportunities, uh, you need to submit a research proposal and a personal statement and you need a letter of recommendation. So when you're applying, basically you'll be applying and you'll have somebody who is going to serve as your mentor that summer, write the letter of recommendation and say, yes, I'm going to work with this person. This is the project that they're going to be working on. We've talked about it. Um, it's, it's a feasible project to do during the summer. Um, so for the URS opportunities, you need to have done a little bit more in terms of already deciding on a project, already deciding on a mentor and that sort of thing. You also need to be a full-time student enrolled in the following school year. So for UC Scholars and Genentech, if you're graduating, if you're planning to graduate at the end of spring 2020, you would need to delay graduation to the end of summer, um, but you would then be able to do the program uh, for URS, you'd have to actually be enrolled in the fall, following fall. Um, so again, there's a number of different specific opportunities under the URS family, and I encourage you to look at those and see if there are some that would be a good fit for your own interests. Another program that we have is the Triton Research and Experiential Learning Scholars Program, or TRELS. This application is due later, it's due in April, 
And it's somewhat similar to URS in that when you apply, you um, apply with a specific project in mind. You also need to have your mentor all lined up. The mentor doesn't need to actually write a letter of recommendation, but does need to um, essentially fill out a form that says, yes, I'm, I'm agreeing to be the mentor for this student. I agree that this is the project. So it's, again, not a full letter. The, the mentor doesn't need to write a full letter, but they do need to endorse you as a candidate for the TRELS program. Uh, one of the exciting things about the TRELS program is that it was designed to help students who perhaps have not had very many research experiences yet. So if you are just kind of embarking on research for the first time, this is a great program for you. It's also not just research, but also experiential learning. So if there's other things that, um, that you might be interested in doing, uh, TRELS might be a good fit. The TRELS applications are reviewed within each college. So, um, students apply through our application portal, but then each college has their own evaluation process. Um, looks like I'm hopping back to URS a little bit. Uh, here's some examples of the different scholarships that are available through URS. There's some that are um, traditional um, or translational and basic bio. Doris Howell focuses on women's health. The Julia Brown focuses on healthcare, med, pharmacy, and public health. So you'll see here that there's a number of different um, sub scholarships within URS. So again, I encourage you to look at our website, look through all the different ones available to find ones that are a good fit for you. So steps to a competitive application. I've already talked a little bit about some of these things, but first of all, do check to meet, make sure that you meet all of the eligibility requirements. Again, each program has their own eligibility requirements. So you just wanna make sure that you do meet those requirements and that you're a good fit for the program. Understand the goals of the program. So if it's a program that's geared only towards students who are definitely interested in going to a PhD graduate program, and you're really interested in going to medical school, it might not be as good a fit for you. Uh, write a personal statement that's clear and expresses your passion. I strongly, strongly recommend getting feedback on your personal statement from others. Uh, the Writing Hub is a fantastic resource and we've done workshops with them in the past. They can really help you um, in terms of making sure that your personal statement says everything that you want it to and expresses it well. Um, so don't hesitate to take advantage of that as a resource. Uh, have friends or family or other people read your, your application. I know sometimes it's easy to write something and it makes perfect sense to you because you've worked on it so long and so hard and then somebody else reads it and they're like, what are you saying here? So make sure that other people take a look at it. Um, determine who could write a letter of recommendation for you if needed and contact that letter writer as early as possible. For UC Scholars and Genentech, because that application is due February 7th, you'll want to contact somebody right away and just kind of indicate that you just recently had some information about uh, some summer research opportunities and ask if they would be um, available to provide a letter, even with this relatively short turnaround time. Um, and I believe that that covers most of the most important information. I do want to make sure that we have plenty of time for questions. Um, but again, my contact information is up there. My name is Kirsten Kung. The Undergraduate Research Hub information is there. One thing I really want to encourage you to do is sign up for our newsletter. If you go to our, um, if you go to our website, kind of towards the bottom of the first page, there's a link to sign up for our electronic newsletter. And that provides information about all of our opportunities. It'll let you know when, um, when applications are due or when they're open. It also provides information about other opportunities, both at UC San Diego and nationwide. So make sure that you um, look at our website, look and sign up for the newsletter. Uh, one thing that I did not talk about a ton, but the, we do have what's called um, a common application. So on our website, you'll see the research application portal. And 
If you're applying to any of our opportunities, you'll first fill out the common application, which includes your name and basic demographic information. And then it will direct you to the specific uh, programs of interest. So things like um, the UC Scholars Program or the Genentech Scholars Program. So just be aware that when you fill out the basic application, there is kind of a secondary part. If it hasn't asked you specific questions about um, a research statement or something along those lines, there's another port portion that you need to do. And then finally, one thing I want to say is please apply to multiple programs. You are not limited to the number of programs that you can apply to. We encourage students to apply to multiple programs because we do have more applications than we have spots available. And so you can apply widely. If you do happen to get accepted into multiple programs, you can only accept one of those offers, but we would be happy to meet with you and talk with you about the different offers and the different programs and figure out you know, the advantages and disadvantages of each or just compare them to help you decide which one is the best program. You don't need to decide right now, which is the best program. You can apply to multiple programs. And then again, if you are accepted to multiple programs, we can help you figure out which ones might be the best. And then finally, if anyone has additional information and particularly uh, additional questions or particularly questions about the application process, this afternoon at four, Dr. Tsai and I are going to be doing a presentation um, that will give a very brief overview of these summer programs, but then we'll kind of focus on walking through the, the application portal itself. So with that, I will stop sharing. Um, and open it to questions and take a quick peek at the chat. So let me just address these questions. Are you disadvantaged for the trials if you have previous research experience? No, we certainly have had students who have applied to trials who have had research experience um, and, and who have been accepted. So it's something where the provosts and the people who started the trials program wanted to make sure that students who have not had research experience have an opportunity to gain that research experience, but it's not something where, oh, you've had research experience, so you could never do trials. Um, trials is also offered during the academic year. So again, if you're interested in doing research during the academic year, please make sure to look at our website or set up an appointment with any of us uh, because we would love for, we'd love to talk to you more and give you some more information about our programs. Um, just looking quickly through the chat. How many students will you take for each program? And where's a link to this afternoon's um, four o'clock session? So in terms of the number of students for each uh, program, it varies from program to program. And it also varies to a certain extent from year to year. Uh, for UC Scholars, for example, we typically take eight students in that program um, and have quite a few applicants. Some years, though, we've been able to get additional funding and have been able to take many more students than that. Um, for the URS opportunities, some of them only take one or two students, um, but some of them have relatively fewer people applying. So please do make sure to apply widely. Um, and, and you know, just kind of throw your hat in the ring and, and see what you can do. I'm going to see if I can very quickly find the link for this afternoon. And then we can open it up to questions. And maybe Alejandra, if you can kind of navigate having uh, anyone who has questions while I get this link. It looks like a specific questions were directed to you. Okay, give me just so one sec. The questions are not in the chat for everyone to view. Oh, got it, okay. Mm -hmm. So I am, If somebody wouldn't mind clicking on that and just confirming that that link works for you to register for this afternoon's talk. Um, and let me take a peek at some of these other questions. It does. Okay, oh good, good. We have a tiny URL set up as well, but this is what I found quickly. So 
Um, okay, great. Thank you for those of you who, who texted and um, confirmed that that's working. There was a question about mentors in general, uh, several questions about mentors in general. Um, so for our programs, we don't have it set up so that there's a list of say, oh, here's the mentors who are UC scholars mentors and you select one of these mentors. Um, essentially, if somebody is a faculty member at UC San Diego, they would be able to be serve as a mentor for one of our programs. There are some people who are great mentors, but might not be able to be a mentor of record because of the specific job title that they have. So somebody who's a research scientist or a postdoc might not be able to serve as the mentor of record, but could work in conjunction with a faculty member and serve as a mentor. Um, there may be faculty members, somebody had written saying, oh, well, I've, I've seen some faculty members who say that they're interested in taking students on for a summer project. Um, but they don't seem to be associated with any of your programs. Could that work? Yes, absolutely. Um, we often what happens is a student reaches out to a faculty member and says, you know, I'm interested in doing research. Do you have availability in your research group? The faculty member says, yes, that's great. And the two, the student and the faculty member meet. And then the faculty member can move into being a mentor with our program. There's not specific requirements for the mentor other than we do have some expectations. So we want to make sure that the mentor is going to be around during the summer and will meet with the student on a semi-regular basis and that sort of thing. So we do have um, some information that we provide to, to mentors to let them know what our summer looks like and what it would look like for them to be a mentor. But if there's somebody who's who is available and interested in serving as a mentor to you during the summer, that person could very likely serve as a mentor through one of our programs. Um, it's also the case that sometimes students do a project on their, uh, of their own. So the student kind of develops a project, goes to a faculty member, says, this is a research project I'd like to do. Would you be my mentor and oversee this project? That's fantastic. That's somewhat rare though. Typically at the undergraduate level, you're working on a project that's part of kind of a bigger program, working with a faculty member who is perhaps already doing research and you're helping with part of that program. So you're not necessarily doing your own standalone project, you're working on a project that's already in play. Um, and that's something that just varies from faculty member to faculty member in terms of how much they say, okay, well, let's develop your own project for you to work on versus let's have you come on board with one of my projects. So I'd be happy to talk with people more about that if they have questions. Um, one other thing, I know I've gotten some questions via email about uh, remote versus in-person at this point. Anyone, it's anyone's guess what's going to happen in the future. As you know, uh, things have been challenging the last couple of years. Um, in 2020, our summer research program was fully remote and students did research remotely. We did all the professional development activities remotely. The conference was remote and it was really wonderful. And students got a lot out of it. Um, you know, we weren't sure how it would work, but the students and the faculty all did a fantastic job um, kind of coming up with ways to still develop skills and learn things even remotely. Last summer, some of the students were able to work on campus and some weren't, some weren't in San Diego physically. So um, it kind of, it, it was a little bit of a hybrid then. Um, for this summer, we're hoping that it'll be back and in person, but we just don't know. Um, so we're kind of planning for in-person, but knowing that we'll need to be flexible and kind of pivot and that sort of thing. Uh, there is another question about, if we reach out to the faculty directly, are we still applying to the program mentioned? Yes. So what I would recommend is looking through our website, looking at the different programs of interest, uh, determining what you're going to need in terms of 
letters of recommendation and whether you'll need a specific project like a proposal, which is what you would need for the URS opportunities. Um, and then reaching out to the faculty members and you can reach out to more than one and you would say, dear Dr. Smith, you know, my name is blah, 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 and talk a little bit about yourself and then indicate that you're very interested in doing research and that you're in the process of looking into summer research opportunities and that there are a number of summer research programs to which you're planning to apply. Um, so it's, it's fine to go ahead and try to line up a mentor and then also talk with them about the program. Now for UC scholars and Genentech, you don't need to have a mentor lined up in advance. You can apply to that program without a mentor, without a specific project. Um, if you have some ideas and say, oh, I think I want to work with Dr. Jones, that's fine. Or if you already have met with Dr. Jones and know that you're gonna work with Dr. Jones, that's fine. But if, it's, if you're at a stage where you feel like, I know I wanna do research, but I really, that's about as far as I've gotten, that's absolutely fine as well. So you can apply and then kind of next step, start looking for mentors. Um, for TRELS and URS, for example, you do need to have the mentor lined up in advance. And so again, you can apply to multiple programs. You could figure out somebody who could write a letter for you for UC Scholars and Genentech and apply to that program. And then while you're in the process of applying to that program, start reaching out to potential mentors um, and see if you could find somebody who would be a good mentor and who would work with you on the URS application. Um, so, so yeah, there's some flexibility to it, but um, you would still be applying to the program kind of getting the mentor and applying to the program are somewhat separate. In other words, if you get a mentor, that's not, you still need to apply to the program if you want to be in one of these programs. Good, I'm glad that answers the question. Are there other questions that people have? Again, one of the things that I really encourage you to do is check out our website, look at the, um, the opportunities that are there both during the academic year and during the summer, and then reach out to us. Our office has a number of different program coordinators and we can certainly, I can answer questions about the UC Scholars Program really well because that's the program that I oversee, but I can also answer questions about trails, for example. So you could reach out and make an appointment with any one of us and we would be able to give you basic information about all of the programs, or you could make an appointment with each of the specific program coordinators, if you like. And this is true whether you're looking to apply to summer programs or if you just have questions about getting involved with research in general and, you know, oh, I don't know if I wanna do research this summer, but I want to kind of start thinking about doing research and how might I go about doing that? Any other questions? Well, I will um, stick around for a few minutes. I don't know if there were any other announcements that you had. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for attending today. This workshop was recorded and will be found on the Idea Center YouTube channel within the next week. Thank you so much. And I'll, again, I'll hang out for just a few minutes in case somebody has a question that they didn't want to put into the chat or ask directly. Nihal uh, Haitong, okay. Oh yeah, sorry, um, I just have a quick question. So um, if we wanna grab some more information like um, besides um, going for the website, can we like reach out 